Howdy folks, it's Barry here. Now this is a little bit of an experiment today. Uh, as you know, for the last four years in this kitchen I've been doing cooking videos and if I combine together our social media community, there's over 200,000 of us worldwide and I can't thank you enough. But some of you guys have messaged me and I've been toying around with the idea for quite a while of turning what I do into like a long form fun food show and that's exactly what I've tried to do today. I've just had a little bit of an experiment. So whether you like my cooking recipes, whether you like cooking with kids, the giant food, the mini food, the tasting of foreign treats, my fun music parody videos I used to do, anything like that that's just come from here but with your help I really believe we can make the most fun interactive food show ever like worldwide and it will be so much fun uh, so I really want you to be honest with me as well if you hate this if you hate this concept let me know down below and we'll just chuck it away if you like it we can adapt it work with it and go with trends if you want to see me eating random stuff getting my friends and family involved I've got a whole pool of people I can collect on or I can go with my camera my aim is to do like one long episode like this and then chop it up upload little mini bits and then do a video responding to your comments because I love reading them and I'm struggling at the moment to get back to them all so by doing one long episode I think I can interact with you guys better and who knows with things like crowdfunding maybe we could take things to another level I could start flying out to your country and just imagine sitting next to you doing a video with you guys we can make it really fun but as I say be honest with it let me know what you think and uh, yeah I'll see you next time Uh, yeah, so this would normally be the start of the video, but as I just gave you that little introduction of telling you what I'm doing, I might as well tell you what we've got coming up. So we're starting off with a fantastic Welsh cake recipe. They are so, so good. Then we're doing a little cheeky GoPro stir fry, and then finishing up with my mum and I trying to eat stinging nails. But first up, uh, let's uh, have some news. Yeah. <laughs> Now I like chicken, right? In fact, we all like chicken, really, unless you're vegetarian or just don't like chicken. But when a mum took her son to a KFC here in the UK, they got a little bit of a shock. So the mum takes her son for a cheeky KFC. He's got it in his hands. He's ready to bite into that succulent chicken. Ugh! Bites into it hard as a rock. Because what's in there, it's not like a human finger, which sometimes we come across. It is a paper towel. That's right, one of those blue hand towels, you know, that you clean with, like in toilets and all that stuff. It was scrunched up and they Kentucky Fried chickened it up. Bad, bad times. But they apologised, the restaurant apologised, although the mum insists they're never going back. They've offered a complimentary meal and also they're going to chuck in a free towel. Blech. Now talking of things cropping up in food, Jesus is popping up everywhere at the moment. He appeared in a frying pan when this guy was cooking up bacon, he's appeared in naan breads and even in a pack of Cheetos, or maybe that should be called Jesus Toes, something like that. And also, as a side note, Jesus backwards, as food related, is like sausage, isn't it? Sausage. Some bad examples include this Yorkshire pudding that's supposed to look a little bit like Susan Boyle and also ramen noodles looking like old school Justin Timberlake hair. But this toast that had jam spread on it that looked like Batman will blow my mind. But there's one thing that needs, a butter stick. That's right, I stumbled upon the invention, the butter stick online, essentially like a stick of glue, uh, but with butter in it. So it's the ultimate in laziness of putting butter on your toast. I mean, what next? Bacon scissors? That's quite a cool idea, I'm gonna copyright that one. And if all this is a little too much, you can invest in a flask tie. And this is their actual tagline, looking good has never felt so refreshing. It's a tie that conceals like drink. So you can be like, <laughs> but I've got an idea. This is my invention. It is the bow tie shot glass for Jaeger bombs. Not gonna take off. Let's move on. Oh, I almost forgot. It was actually my birthday this week too. And my mum took me to see a DeLorean, a real proper one. I went for a drive in it and everything. So, so cool. And then I got a Lego one, except it took me two and a half hours to build, but I can now like go 88 miles an hour in my kitchen. Let's do the Welsh cakes right now. Yep, that's right. Today's recipe is Welsh cakes as requested by Beth and Jane 22. If you want to have a go at making this recipe, hit pause on the video now. Just like all my recipes, it's the first time you're making it, so you can have a go too. You want to grab yourself a bowl, first of all, Let's do it. Yeah, so we'll whack our bowl down. And what we're gonna do is put all our dry ingredients into here. So let's start off with our big old plain flour, the butchness of this recipe, in that goes. Wow. Now we're gonna follow up with our sugar. So don't worry about sieving any of this, because in a minute, we're gonna get our hands in there. It's gonna be like, oh yeah, baby, right in there. Little sprinkling of mixed spice. Oh yeah, about a teaspoon of that on there. Ooh, lovely. Uh, baking powder as well. You could like move this out of the way of the recipe. Move that out of the way doesn't make sense. You could just omit that and use self-raising flour instead. Right, so I'm just mixing that together with a spatula. It's completely optional. In fact, you don't really need to do that, and I don't know why I did, but we'll just go over that. Don't worry about it. 
Right, so now comes the messy bit. Grab yourself a princess plate if you can, because these are the best plates in the world. Phoebe says that anyway. I mean, obviously, if you've got a normal plate, that's fine. And what we want to do is use our fingers and thumbs and just work those dry ingredients into that butter. So really get it in there. It's going to be a little minging at first, as I say, but just get it all through, and we'll see you in a minute. I just moved my camera to show you this at another angle and I now have flour all over my lens. How cool is that? But anyhow, um, as you can see, it's slightly going a lightly golden colour. Just keep working it through until it's nice and fine. Hi, hi. Oh, there you are. Uh, anyhow, with it nice and light and golden and slightly breadcrumbing, I've started to add my currants in. So, whoa, it's in a mug, not a mug of coffee. Uh, but you could use sultanas if you prefer, something like that, or if you want to ramp it up and be a little bit untraditional. Uh, maybe some orange peely zesty stuff. But anyhow, uh, we can get our hands in this again, sort of mix it together. Can you see that? Can you see that right there? I can, yeah, I can see it. Get it all through there, and then we're going to wet it up with an egg. So this, in this glass here, is one egg. It's not been beaten. You need to beat it. Beat it! Like Michael Jackson style. I'm just going to go in there and moisten it up. So I'm just going to beat this egg up very briefly uh, with a fork in there and just tip it whew, straight in there. So we're going to mix it through. Might as well use that same fork. You can see the currents have really worked their way through there. What we want to do is form a sort of dough here. And if it's still a little dry, uh, luckily having so many kids in the house, especially uh, Chloe drinking all the milk, we have got loads of milk. And so we're going to just pour that in if needs be to get a nice sort of clumpy doughy texture. Right folks, so I've been mixing it together with my fork and as you can see it's coming together kind of like a cookie dough texture and that is exactly what we're after. So if yours is drier than this, add some milk as I say, but for me, we're going to get our cookie cutters on it, this is perfect. So I've moved the bowl to one side and I've got my plain flour tub here and what I've been doing is just sprinkling down my board there because we do not want it to get stuck there, we want it to have a little bit of So let's get the dough down, oh yeah. Right, so I'm just plonking my dough down. What I'll do actually is just get it nice and coated in flour just to dry it out a little bit more because believe it or not, this is still a little wet. So what you can do, you can either do this with a rolling pin or press it out with your hands as you go and gradually work it. But you want it around about the thickness of your little pinky, okay? So right there, maybe a little thinner than that just so it cooks properly. Okay, so it's nice and flat now. I used my rolling pin and got it nice and smooth. I would recommend you do that. I mean, rough is kind of cool and rustic, but let's just go with keeping it nice and smooth, baby. So we want to get yourself a cookie cutter like this and just make some little shapes and we can keep remolding it and rolling it again. But there's nothing stopping you like using like a funky heart shape for Valentine's Day, something like that. So just make little rounds like this. We'll make as many as we can and it's time to cook them up. Okay, don't think guys, so I finished cutting them out and I managed to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I've got a little bit left over so I can make a mini one. Dusted them with a little flour to stop them drying out. Let's get cooking them. Just to say, don't worry if you make a little bit of a mess uh, in your kitchen like I have. You know, it's a bit of a flour protest. It's part of the fun. Whoa! Okay, folks, I've just lit my hob. You might have just caught that and me go, ah! Uh, so we've got a pan here uh, with a knob of butter. It's going to whack that down. We're going to melt it up. I'm just going to cook one to show you, but then we just repeat those steps with all of them. Yeah. Right, so our butter is nice and warmed up now. It's just starting to bubble. So we're gonna place one in there. It's gonna take about three minutes, get it nice and golden brown, flip it over, cook it around about probably two minutes that side, and then we'll rest it on some kitchen towel. And just to say, you could use a griddle pan for this step if you want, get some nice lines on it. Right, so I'm just turning it over. Oh yes, you can see that nice light golden color on there. That did take exactly three minutes. So as you can see, the butter's gone a little bit. I'm gonna need to keep topping it up. So I'll repeat that steps and then drain it. Now the cool thing about these is they're still warm, so giving them a nice little dusting of sugar all along there. But you could like put butter on there, you could have jam, even some cheeky Nutella. That is them all done. Oh my goodness, these are delicious. I must put them down. And how easy was that? So I really hope you give it a go. If you do, uh, let me know how you get on at My Virgin Kitchen. Send me a picture and all that stuff. And if you want to vote for my next recipe, get involved at myvirginkitchen.com or simply let me know down below what you want to see next. Those Welsh cakes were incredible and they've already all gone. You must, must, must try this recipe. Here is my nephew Jack with a fun food fact game. Look, you're behind a volcano. Is that cool? Look at it. Can you see yeah. It? Is that amazing? Yeah. Cool. Hi, I'm Jack and I've got four food facts for you. Three of them are right and one of them are wrong. Food fact number one, a strawberry isn't a berry but a banana is a berry. Do you think that's right? Yeah. Food fact number two, if you hold your nose and eat an apple and a potato or an onion, it will taste the same. What do you think of that one, mate? A bit weird. You reckon it's true? No. Oops. Is that a nice Welsh cake? Mm-hmm. How's it taste? 
Nice. Food fact number three. When corn was discovered, the farmers used to call it ear corn because when they were first harvested, they used to carry it in their ears. What do you think of that? True. Really? Yeah. Why? Because it sounds like it is. Food fact number four. When the first ever made soup was tasted hippo flavour. Do you think that's real? Yes. Would you eat a hippo? No. Why not? Because it might taste weird. What about hippo soup? Yeah. That's the end of my food facts. Let me know down below which one was the fake. Bye! I wasn't actually behind a volcano. Yeah, that's the green screen. I've got to put it in in a minute. That's that bit of green cloth, right? You okay about that? Yeah. You gonna hurt me? Mm-hmm, that stir fry was a stonker and you can customise it by switching up the meat so it doesn't have to be chicken, use what you like or also load it with veggies if you want a veggie option. And how about those food facts from Jack? Which one do you think was the fake one? I think it was pretty obvious, but anyhow, Phoebe wanted to get involved by doing her own food game, so check this one out. Hi, I'm Phoebe and I'm in my room. You have to try and guess what, what type of food I'm going to talk today. I'm going to give you five clues. Clue number one it's um, very squirty. Clue number two, it is very delicious. Clue number three, it has very special sauce in it and I like it. Clue number four, it sometimes has mushrooms in it. My final clue is, um, it smells like vegetables and sometimes pepper. Right guys, I'm gonna give you one more clue and stare into my eyes and try and guess what I'm thinking of. I'm gonna give you three seconds. Three, two, one. Time's up. Did you get it right? My rabbit got it right. It was spaghetti bolognese. If you got it right, you're my friend. If you got it wrong, you're, you're a bit silly. See you soon, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Of course it was spaghetti bolognese. How did we not work that out, Phoebe? So, so good. Thank you, mate. Spaghetti bolognese is one of my most favourite dishes in the house. But speaking of things I don't like, Stinging nettles. Uh, the other day I took my mum out and we went and picked or foraged for stinging nettles to drink and eat them. This is how we got on. Right, so I'm here uh, with my mum, aren't I? Hi. And a dog, Emmy. Say hello, Emmy. Hey, Emmy. Um, we are foraging uh, for stinging nettles, right? That's it, we're gonna forage. Uh, although we don't really need to forage very hard because there's like loads of them all around here, right? Look at loads. But basically, 
stinging nettles. I used to have a fear of them when I was a kid, didn't I? You certainly did. And uh, we're gonna make a stinging nettle tea. So you're gonna drink it, right? You say I'm gonna drink yeah. it, yeah. My mum will drink it. And actually, we are by my mum's house, and there's a huge bush room literally behind the house, so that's quite convenient. Did you put them there purposely? Or? <laughs> no, they're just growing. No. Let's see how we get on. I don't understand that why dogs, they can sniff stinging nettles and that and not get hurt. Maybe they're a bit more butch. Yeah, just a few. Watch your arms. You can get stung. You might need a bit more than that. That's it. It's been very tentative. Let me go. We don't want... Oh. Somebody's had a go at that. It's all nibbled. Well, we might have to wash oh, it off. Oh, no, I don't want that one. You're not going to poison me. No, well, I don't think so. Am I in your will? You have to wait and see. Ah, well, we might find out tomorrow. <laughs> That's it. Look at that. All right, watch my fingers. Ah, oh my gosh. <laughs> right, I think you I'm okay now. You. That's going to be enough. Yeah, stinging out tea is supposed to be really good for you. And once it's all wilted, or we'll get that hot water on it, it takes the sting out of it. So that's good, right? Well, what are you doing? So. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what it's like, but. Uh, Good for the digestion. Yes, very good and uh, <laughs> bowels. <laughs> oh, it's very strong actually. You can really smell the... The smell. <laughs> you can really smell the smell. Hmm. It's like minty... It's just wafting up, really. Yeah. Ooh. So get all the leaves off. They're nice and... I'm staying well away because I hate sting nettles, but um, <laughs> I just can't get over that this sting is going to go once we boil it. That's what I'm going to struggle with. I hope it's gonna go. Ugh. Yeah, oh, no, 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 sorry. Right. You carry on, Mum. So, yeah, wash all those bugs off. Oh, that smells good now as well. Smell it? Mmm. All right. So, we put our first leaf in there, and our stinging nettle tea is commencing already. Can you feel it? Can you feel it coming together now, Mum? It is coming together. It's gonna to take a while to just double check. Yeah, but that's because no you're giving bugs. it like a full, like, full on bath. We just want to wash the bugs off. Don't want to like get like bubble bath on it and stuff like that. <laughs> what was that? It wasn't a laugh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh dear, dear, dear. Look at this. Look. Come on. Just don't have to be fussy about it. Just get. Give it a little well, wash. I'm going to be fussy if I'm going to drink it, haven't I? Yeah, but I'm sure they don't do that on the tea farms and all that. I bet okay. there's bugs all over it all the time. <laughs> You've got some fresh water, right? You don't want to use that one down there? Bit no, dirty. definitely not. This is our fresh water going into the pan. You look like you know what you're doing there, Mum. And there goes. It's just about covering. Hey, there you go. So, right. So, apparently, you've got to bring this up. I guess we want to push all these leaves down. Mm. And uh, it's going to simmer off, and we'll be uh, drinking the finest quality nettle tea. Right, so it's been simmering away, and it smells just like spinach to me. Is it to you? Spinach. Mm. And apparently, you can actually use this as a replacement for spinach in any dish. So, uh, yeah, nice and cheap. And the water is going all green, and that is going to be our tea. Oh, it's looking good. Yeah. Oh, that's really hot. What is? The hand was fine. No, it's too hot Mom, for me. Honestly, the hand was fine. All right. So, we've got a sieve here. My mum's just draining it off. Look at the colour of it. It's gone from green to like a brownie kind of colour. Look at that. So, uh, we'll keep the leaves as well, because we're going to try those, okay? You might. <laughs> yeah, 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 I've got to do it. That's my fear. I mean, the tea, I know that I probably won't like, but... Wow. Ta-da! Finest plate, are. and that was right there. And they smell... What do they smell like, Mum? Oh, smell herbly. Herb mm. Herbly. Yeah, very herbly. Yeah, herbal. Herbal. Herbal, that's how we say it. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Um, this is a fear of mine, more than the tea. I'm not that fussed about drinking that, although it's kind of brown coloured, right? It doesn't look very pleasant. But this is a fear of mine, just trying to pick one up. Ah! <laughs> it's furry still. <laughs> no, but I didn't get stung, I didn't get stung. There we go. You've done it. Yeah, you can pick them up. They're still furry and hairy, kind of like a lizardy thing. So I'm going to taste it. You gonna try one? Come on, try one. Oh, I don't know. No, try it. Try it. No. Go on, I try it. Know it. Try it. Okay. It's all right. <laughs> Your face doesn't look as if it's all right. Oh, it's really hairy and furry. And... Oh no. It's like spinach, but like a little bit blander. How could you know spinach is quite bland, isn't it? A little bit of texture behind it, but that's just like eating hair. Oh, really? no, 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 I don't want any hair. Anyhow, Mum, 
Let's have our tea now. Let's go for the tea. You can forget the bottoms up. So we've done it in a glass uh, so you guys can see the colour. It's kind of brown. We're not sure if we uh, picked some particularly dirty nettles, right? But mm, Let's have a go. Right, ready? Yeah. Go. Oh, I tried to spit it out there, give me that water. It's alright. Ah, I hate tea. Ah. <clears throat> ah. No, it's just like drinking grass. It does, it is, um, got a huge grass taste to it, but I'd be okay with this. So how does it feel to actually have eaten a piece of this nettle. It's good because I feel like by doing this, oh, I'm winning the battle, I've overcome picking up stinging nettles, but um, there's no way I could drink that, but you liked it. Or... I found it quite refreshing. I think it'd be quite good, yeah. I would much rather board up a pan of water and just drink <laughs> hot water, you know, or straight out of the kettle, obviously let it cool down a bit, but. Water's good. Yeah, it's been an interesting experiment and maybe we'll get my mum to test some other stuff out of me again soon, right? Yeah, if you've got any thoughts, let us know. <laughs> yeah, for me that was one heck of a fear, picking up those sting nettles at the end. Imagine that sting was still there, but it had gone. But I do not think I'll be replacing my spinach just too soon. Now this is the bit at the end of the video where I wanted to comment on the pictures you've sent me, but as this is the first one, if you do send me pictures at my Virgin Kitchen, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, anything like that, I could sort of comment on them, good and bad. But I think we've done enough of this test episode to see what you guys think. Let me know down below if you want to see more of this. Comments, feedback, positive, negative. I will love you guys anyway. Hope you've enjoyed it. Good times. See you again.